Yeah, can you hear me? That sounds all right. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you, dear TEDx team, for organizing this uh, event. I'm really grateful to be here today. And uh, yeah, my name is Fisnik, and I have brought something with me today. You can already see it on my right. This is what we like to call a fallen soldier. It is uh, a fallen soldier that fell in the war for curiosity. And it is also testament to one of the most important lessons I've learned in one of the greatest stories of my life. This story began with 15 students who have never built a rocket before and were told, build a supersonic rocket in one year. This is our story and the story how we learned how to fly. Great. <laughs> Back up a little bit, I am from the space team Aachen. We do everything around aerospace research. We are a student initiative and we build rockets, we build rovers, we build satellites, experiments, you name it. And our main goal, our main mission, is to promote aerospace research in and around Aachen, make Aachen a center of space flight. This is a story of motivation, of failure, and achievement. And if there's just one person in this room to take this as motivation to do something great, then it was already well worth it. So let's talk about this picture. Awesome. <laughs> This picture is probably a little bit weird. It doesn't make sense. It has no context, but it will make sense in a minute. Just stay with me. This is a rocket launching from a boat. And if you knew the history I'm about to tell you, you wouldn't deem this outcome very likely. This is how we failed our success with Project Aquila. Let's reel back to 2021. Back then, uh, our team uh, built a rocket called CAR-2. It was an iteration of CAR-1, and it participated at the European Rocketry Challenge 2021 in Portugal. There were a lot of improvements in, compared to CAR-1, but sadly, well, this happened. We crashed. <laughs> the second parachute got entangled, and we hit the ground hard. So the team back then had a decision to make. Do they iterate further and design CAR-3, or do they want to do something better, something bigger, something that goes higher and faster? And so they promptly decided to make Project Supersonic a thing. It should be a new team with new members, and they should compete at the 9-kilometer category of the European Rocketry Challenge. The rocket was supposed to fly to 9 kilometers and land back safely with two parachutes. So new members were recruited, and back then, I was one of the lucky ones to be recruited, and so we got off to work. We called the rocket Akira after the standard Roman legions carried into battle. We did a lot of cool stuff, a lot of improvements compared to CAR-2. Uh, for example, we improved our way of manufacturing carbon fiber body tubes. So that was fun. But we also built our own parachutes, our own electronics, we had advanced simulations, all of that nerdy techie stuff, and it was really, really good. And then it was finally time to apply for the competition. We handed in our application, and then we got rejected. So now what? That was a shock for sure. I mean, we've been struggling with technical documentation, but getting rejected? That has never happened before. Would you be demotivated? Well, luckily not our team, because our team has something that I like to call the Aquila spirit. They did not give up. They said, hey, let's just take on the next big challenge. And so they decided to remember an early goal of Space Team Aachen, the Spaceport America Cup, the biggest rocketry competition in the world, and being the first German team to launch there was always a dream of ours. So we did just that. And we had a new competition that meant new rules. And so back to the drawing board. We worked really, really hard, had a lot of meetings, a lot of night shifts, 
And, uh, well, there was a lot of pain involved with that. <laughs> but we managed to come through. There were also a lot of logistical and financial challenges because America is not Europe, so that was expensive. And then it was finally time to apply for the competition in October 2022, and this time we got accepted. So everything seemed to be go the right way for the first time in this brief project history. And then we even secured a test launch in southern Germany up to 1.5 kilometers. Before the test launch, we assembled our rocket for the first time. It uh, has a beautiful carbon livery when it's not painted. <laughs> and it was just beautiful to assemble this rocket for the first time and see all of this hard work come together. So off we went to southern Germany. We picked up some last supplies at our sponsors. We, got, we went to Darmstadt and picked some 3D printings that we missed to pick up. <laughs> and then when we arrived, there were two days of intense preparation, no sleep. Many forgot to eat or drink due to the intensity of the stress. And then we finally made it to the launch site. We prepared everything, went through our checklists, put on the rocket onto the launch rail, and then it was finally time. Five, five, Yeah, I love this video, it's beautiful. Uh, and why do I love this video? Because mobile phones cannot comprehend the sound a rocket makes. It literally feels like the gates of hell opened up. <laughs> this cannot convey that tone, it just doesn't. So, first rule of rocketry, pointy end up, flamey end down, so that's good. Then, the moment in the end when you saw these two white exhaust plumes, that was our first parachute that got ejected. So that was good. But did you see a second parachute? Nah, I didn't either. <laughs> this happened. <laughs> we crashed once again. So at this point, you could be very devastated and say, oh man, the competition is in one and a half months, what should we do? but not our team, because our team has the Aquila spirit. And so they, they made it much more fun to play detectives and try to figure out what happened here. Apparently, our nose cone ejected at the highest path in our trajectory, so that's the pointy end of the rocket, which was planned, so that was good. But then the rocket crashed with the nose cone, and the nose cone broke with our electronics in it, so the second parachute could not be activated. This is what we in Rocketry call a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. So, now we could implement all of the changes that uh, the lessons brought us from this test flight. It was still one and a half months until the competition, and we worked really hard to implement those changes. But then it was finally time. Off we went to America. It was really beautiful. And finally, all of the hard work uh, that we put in in one and a half years finally made it to this moment. And what we didn't realize is that our rocket Aquila was actually the talk of the competition. Uh, we've heard the phrase, this is German engineering, <laughs> more times than we could count. <laughs> to our surprise. <laughs> Yeah, so we got some less safety checks, and they let us through easily, because this is German engineering, apparently. And uh, then there were just some last days of preparation. They were really hard. We uh, stayed up till 3 a.m., which is really, really hard, considering that we had to wake up at 3.30 in the morning. Some last lines of codes, night shifts, and then at 3.30, uh, we had to go to the launch site, because the launch site opens at 6 a.m., and early launch means bonus points. And as we are efficient German engineers, we had to be first in line. 
And so we did just that. Went there, 45 minutes assembling a rocket, <laughs> and then to the launch pad. It was very, very beautiful to see that rocket on the launch pad. And uh, we put on the rocket onto the launch rail, put in the igniters, and then we retreated because safety distance. And five, four, three, two, one, nothing. The wind ruined the day for everyone. You can uh, see it a little bit. It was a really windy day. And so we couldn't launch. We had to take the rocket back and do it all over again, like in Groundhog Day. So we went back home. We prepared everything again until 3 AM, because code is never finished. And then again, waking up at 3.30, going to the launch site, 45 minutes, assembling the rocket. We put in the igniters. We put the rocket up the uh, launch rail. And then this. Was again five, four, three, two, one. Nothing. <laughs> Yet again, we couldn't launch. Why now? It seems like our igniter shorted, and we had to go back to the launch pad and put in the new igniters. So we had to retrieve the rocket again, put in new igniters, and then finally, at last, this moment. There it is. That went well. We talked about parachutes a lot. Did you see a parachute? No. So, we come back to our fallen soldier. This is actually the exact position in which we found our rocket in. It's stuck in the ground one and a half meters below, and we had to dig it up. <laughs> At this point, some of our members promptly had to change their profession from rocketeers to archaeologists. <laughs> and of course, you could be devastated, but our team has the Aquila spirit. They found it much, much, much more fun to dig up the rocket and find out how the hell did this happen. And it seems like in the end it happened because the commercial backup computer just failed and ejected our nose cone at supersonic speeds. So the rocket came down without any parachute from nine kilometers and probably hit the ground supersonic. So that was fun. <laughs> And then, a few weeks later, the results were in. To our surprise, we got first place in design and build quality. <laughs> that is one of the four categories. We also got one of the best technical reports because we submitted 300 pages of documentation like German engineers would do. <laughs> But we got points deducted because we wouldn't convert to Imperial units. <laughs> but, as you can imagine, we did get not any points for the flight or the recovery. Still, we managed to get 74th place out of 150, even if we didn't even get half of the points. So, saying that this is the first rocket we've ever built, this is a success for us. And we see it like this. So, this is a story, as I already told you, of motivation, of failure, and achievement. And we have to go back to the picture that is about to come. This. This will be us. Aquila will spread its wings again, this time from a boat in the North Sea. We will be part of the German Offshore Spaceport Alliance, of the demo launch of the German Offshore Spaceport Alliance, launching from the very first spaceport in the North Sea. 
It is a national event and all eyes are on us. The challenges seem higher than ever. But we stayed motivated through missteps, pushed through our failure. Many things are not, but this is actually rocket science. I talked a lot about things that don't concern you. This is very absurd, launching rockets from the middle of New Mexico or from boats in the North Sea. So what can you take away from this? Well, our fallen soldier reminds us uh, of one very, very important lesson, and that is very simple. 100% of the shots you don't take miss. And also, um, science, we, I got a statistic for you. 10 out of 10 times, if you don't talk to your crush, you will not go on a date with her. <laughs> you will not. And also, 10 out of 10 times, if you don't just build a supersonic rocket and launch it from a boat, you will never build a supersonic rocket and launch from a boat. So it is easy to give up in despair when things are hard, like they are in sciences, for example. But if you push through, you might just get what you want. And honestly, worst case, if you don't, and you do it with great people, then at least you have a great experience. So talking about people, this is a team of students who have never built a rocket before. <laughs> and we pushed through with dedication and motivation. If we, some newbies who've never built a rocket before, can do this, imagine what you could do. With that being said, from Aachen to the stars, Ad Astra Ex Aachen. <laughs>